Hello students, today we will study about electrostats. Now you must be wondering what is this electrostats. So let's start with some common examples which you have seen in your daily life. Let's see the first one. When we take off our synthetic shirt or a nylon shirt, you must have heard that crackling sound, something like that. It happens especially during winter or summers. Another thing that you must have seen that the, suppose you are on your table, on your chair and you are tying your laces, it's a plastic chair, you suddenly, we, uh, you know, get from the chair and go to the door to open it. Wow, you get an electric shock. Why is that happening? There is another one, lightning. I hope everyone knows about lightning. All these things that we are talking about are because of the discharge of electric charge through our body the charge got accumulated in our bodies okay to rubbing of insulating surface when you were sitting on the plastic chair it was an insulating surface so your body was rubbing with it and charge got accumulated you got a metal surface boom the charge got transferred that's why you got an electric shock now let's take another interesting case that if you have seen not right now this happens but previously this was happening that the trucks and everything which were carrying the inflammable substances they had a chain which was dragging along when they were moving why was that because what is happening when the truck is moving on the road what will happen that the charts get accumulated now the substance inside is inflammable. What will happen? It may burn. Explosion may happen. So if that, you know, the metal rod or the metal chain, what it will do? It will ask, the, put the charge to the ground. Our thing happens. So charge is not accumulated. So this is the same thing. The metallic bodies of cars and truck also get charged because of friction between them and air passing them. This charge can produce a spark which can be dangerous in case of petrol tanker. This is what I was sharing. So the petrol tankers have a metal chain dragging along the ground which leak the charge produced to the ground. Nowadays the tires, now this is interesting, this is what I was saying to you people that this happened, used to happen earlier but right now what is happening? Now the tires are made in a special manner. So the tires are made by adding carbon compound to the rubber which facilitate the charge build up to lead to the ground. Now these were just examples. Let us come to our topic which is electrostats. What is electrostats? So electrostat is that branch of physics in which we study about charges at rest. That is Static charges, the force between the static charges, the potential due to the static charges and all those things associated with them. Now comes a very interesting thing. What is charge? So, in order to understand the concept of charge, let me move a bit further to the topic. I will come to the definition, don't worry, I will come to it. But I want to go a bit further than that. I hope every one of you know about proton positively charged, electron negatively charged, neutron neutral charge and you know about others alpha particle, beta particle and so on. I don't want to discuss that right now. I want to discuss let's take two electrons. So what we have done, we have electron, we have proton and neutron as I said they all have masses. I want to find out the force of attraction between two electrons. Remember grade 9 and grade 11? What we studied. Every body in the universe attracts every other body. So the two electrons must be attracting one another. We try to find out the force. Do you remember the formula? F is equals to G M1 M2 by R square. Where M1 and M2 are the masses of the two electrons. Which is same. And we have taken the distance between the two electrons to be the minimum, let's take one centimeter. And capital G, I hope everyone knows, 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11. When I put these values, 
What am I getting? The force of attraction is 5.5 into 10 to the power of minus 67 newtons. But the case is that we have found that the two electrons, they repel each other. Now this is a physical observation. The two electrons, they repel each other. And they repel each other with a force which is 2.3 into 10 to the power of minus 24 Newton. Can you see that the force of repulsion is more than the force of attraction? That means the electron is having something more than its mass which is causing this repulsion. Now comes the concept. That additional thing is called as charge. So, mass is responsible for the gravitational force of attraction and charge is responsible for the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion. Okay, let's come to the definition. It says, charge is something possessed by a material object because of which or due to which it, may, it is possible for them to exert force on another particle or experience the force exerted by someone. Okay, so charge is something possessed by material object that makes it possible for them to exert electrical forces and to respond to the forces. So this is what we know about charge. This is what I shared. Now Benjamin Franklin was the first one who classified the charges. You know, he said that there are two kinds of charges, positive and negative. And by convention, there is no as such any other idea that why. By convention, we have taken that the charge acquired by the glass rod or cat's fur is positive and the charge acquired by the ebonite rod and silk cloth is negative. Now, as I have written, recharging by induction, as, so just read it, it's a very simple concept. If you don't understand, you can uh, mail me, I will explain it further in a separate video. Okay, now let us come to this thing. This is our first topic according to the syllabus given, quantization of charge. Now what do we mean by this quantization of charge? It's nothing but the total charge if I want to find out. That's because due to the quantization of charge. For example, if I have 10 electrons, so my charge is 10 E. If I have 20 electrons, it's 20 E. So quantization of charge means that it was first suggested by Faraday and the experimental observation was done by Millikan, whose famous oil drop experiment you must have studied in chemistry. Now, what is quantization of charge? It says that it is the property by virtue of which all the free charges are an integral multiple of the basic unit of charge. That is the total charge Q is equal to N times of E. N is the number of charged particles. E is the charge of one particle. So Q is the total charge of the body. N is the integer and E is the charge on electron or proton basically we take electron and the charge is by the way same on both that is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs now this quantization of charge is only meaningful at the microscopic level that is when we are finding at a very you know minute level let me give you an example that if I make a line with dots dot 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 like this and if you are seeing that from a distance for you it will be a complete line but when you are coming closer to that you will find out it's not a complete line it's just dots okay your brain has combined the dots that means the microscopic and microscopic level now at the microscopic level the charges are involved are 10 to the power of 13 E, which is very, very, very large. Now, at this scale, 
if you are head C, it's 10 to the power of 13. If you are adding one charge, you are subtracting one charge, you cannot see the difference. Because there are so many charged particles, adding one or subtracting one won't impact it. But at the microscopic level, even a small change matters. That's why we say quantization of charge is only meaningful at the microscopic level, not at the macroscopic level. Next, as this example I have shared for a dotted line viewed from a distance appears continuous, but it is not continuous in reality. Okay. Now, conservation of charge, you have all studied about conservation of charge in your previous classes and don't worry. We will study about this later on in the unit atom and nuclei. So right now need not to worry on that aspect. So but let me tell you, I hope you all know that, that the total charge is conserved in any nuclear reaction. Or charges cannot, can be created or destroyed in equal and unlike pairs. Okay. Example is pair production, pair product, this is gamma is equal to electron plus positron. Again, as I said, I will explain this in atom and nuclei chapter. Annihilation of matter, this is electron plus positron will give gamma plus gamma. Okay. Nuclear reaction, this is the easiest. Can you see the total charge 92, 90 plus 2, 92. So it is, the, it is conserved in a nuclear reaction. Now comes a very important topic for you people called as Coulomb's law. Now children, please pay attention here because now onwards everything is related. It's a continuation part. So you need to understand this very well. Only then you can understand the further topics that I will teach you. Now, this I will explain, but there is a question. We say like charges repel each other. Why? Why have you said that like charges repel each other? And you will say, oh, I have this, uh, uh, I have two like charges. By the way, that's an experiment that we do with magnets, not with charges. So how do you know like charges repel each other? This also we will prove here. Now, first of all, let's understand what is Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law says that the force of interaction Mind you, I am not saying attraction or repulsion. I am saying force of interaction. It can be attraction, it can be repulsion. So the force of interaction between two unit charge particle. Unit means very small, okay? To or point charge particles, you can say. The force of interaction between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. I hope uh, that's the same thing which I said. Now, here, F is proportional to, we have taken the magnitude because positive and negative, I will tell you why, how we take it because that only tells the direction of force, nothing else. Here, we want to find out the magnitude. So, F is proportional to mod of Q1, that is magnitude of Q1, magnitude of Q2, upon r square. If I remove the sign of proportionality, this you have studied, this thing you are now, you know, understanding since grade 9, that if I remove the sign of proportionality, I have to put a constant. And that constant we take as k. Here k is called as electrostatic force constant. And its value depends on two things. One is system of units you are taking, that is CGS or SI. And the second one is the medium. So, if I am using in CGS k is equals to 1. So, F is equals to Q1, Q2 by R square. But in SI system, we take k is equals to 9 into 10 to the power of 9. Newton meter square per Coulomb square. And by the way, this k is 9 into 10 to the power. This we represent as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. Now this is epsilon. Okay. What is this epsilon naught? It is called as absolute electrical permittivity of free space. 
this I will explain later on with magnetism what is this because there is another term which is very similar to this which will come later at that time I will discuss with you that what do you mean by this absolute electrical permittivity of free space now it is epsilon naught that's why it is absolute electrical permittivity of free space if this naught is not there that is only epsilon, epsilon is there then I will say electrical permittivity of the medium remember I told you it depends on K depends on medium also so if I have a medium I will say 1 upon 4 pi epsilon this naught is for air or vacuum okay so what is my formula f is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught mod of q1 mod of q2 upon r square I hope this is clear to each and every one. This is a very important formula which you should be aware of and which you should be understanding completely. Now, the unit dimension and value of epsilon naught. So, in this, just put epsilon naught here, f here, put the values. So, the unit comes out as Coulomb square per Newton meter square. Okay? Dimensions again put the values, it will be m minus 1, l minus 3, t4, and a2. You all know this how to put it, the values. Okay, now epsilon, as I said, what was the value? Remember, it's here, what was the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught? It is 9 into 10 to the power of 9. So, if I want to find out the value of epsilon naught, what should I do? 1 by 4 pi into 9 into 10 to the power of 9, and that comes out as. 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square i hope that is clear to you people now if you remember just a few minutes back i asked you this question how do you know like charges repel each other unlike charges i will answer this just wait for it now we will understand the coulomb's law in vector form vector form is by the way nothing just the direction comes into play. So what we are doing, Coulomb's law in vector form, okay, so I have the three coordinates, x, y, z, I have two charges, q1 and q2, which are at position vectors r1 and r2, okay, this is all written, so r1 is oa, position vector of q1, r2 is ob, position vector of q2, now, vector leading from Q1 to Q2, that is from here to here, we are saying AB. Vector is there, R12. R12 will be R2 minus R1. Similarly, if I want to find out vector leading from B to A, so that will be BA, R21, but that will be R1 minus R2. I hope that is clear. And another thing, if I have taken this positive, obviously that will be negative. That's a common sense. Okay. And you all know about unit vectors. What is a unit vector? Vector divided by its magnitude. And why is a unit vector used and where is it used? It is used to provide the direction. So, unit vector is vector divided by magnitude. Same for R12 or R21. Okay. Another thing is F12 and F21. Now, F12. Force on Q1, U to Q2. And F21 is force on Q2, Q2, Q1. They both are applying force on one another. Let's take the force part. We are talking about the force applied on the force on Q2 because of Q1. That is the force applied by Q1 on Q2. So that will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2 by AB square and along AB. Children, please pay attention to this part. Very, very, very important. If you are not writing the direction, half marks will be deducted. Either you write along AB or write the unit factor. That is also fine. Okay. Now, so what I did, see in the next step, I replaced it. Along AB is replaced by the unit factor R12. Okay. Now, I hope you remember just here itself. What is the unit vector? Vector divided by magnitude. And here you have magnitude square. So one more. So that's why it is Q. And this is the 
vector. I hope that is clear to you people. Here you can put R2 minus R1, not necessary. Not necessary. Okay. Now comes the important part and you what you are waiting for. For the last 10 minutes I am saying I will tell, I will tell. Now let's come to the topic. Now we are talking about the force. The force what we are saying, but you can say this as K also. Okay. So K Q1 Q2 by R square. That is fine. Now what I want to know is that what if Q1 Q2 are of the same sign. That is whether uh, if they are say positive positive or negative negative. What will happen? This force will come out as positive. And I hope you remember grade 11. What we studied in grade 11. That positive means repulsion. Negative means attraction. Now I hope now you understand why we are saying that the like charges repel each other because the force is coming out as positive. But if I take the next case in which I am taking Q1 as positive and Q2 is negative and you can go vice versa. What will happen in that scenario? F will come out as negative and negative means attractive. Let us take this example. I am positive, you are negative. So if I am applying force, what will happen? You, the force is negative. I am applying force on you. If it was positive, you should have gone, gone that way. But you are coming my way because the force is negative. I apply force in that direction, but the answer is coming negative. Negative means you are getting attracted. That means that the like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. The same case, if Q1, Q2 are of the same sign, the product is more than zero. So it's along R12. That is repulsion. Okay. So see, this is the same thing. That this is, this is applying force on this. As I told you, F21 is force experienced by Q2 because of Q1. So what is the direction? See the direction. So repulsion. If you see here also, that's the same thing. Now, if they are of the opposite sign, what is happening? Q1, Q2 product is less than 0. So, what is happening? Can you see the direction? Q1 is going towards Q2 and Q2 is moving towards Q1 because the forces are opposite. Force is negative. Okay? So, by the way, this was... Let's do the Newton's third law. What was Newton's third law? To every action there is equal and opposite reaction and action and reaction take place on different bodies. What is this? F12. What is 1 by 4 pi epsilon or Q1, Q2 by R12 square and unit vector R21. By the way I told you R21 is minus of R12. And if I take R12 here, isn't it F21? So F12 is equal to minus of F21. Newton's third law proved. Congrats. Now comes the unit of charge, which we have already discussed. The SI unit of charge is Coulomb. Okay, remember one more thing. If you want to write Coulomb, it has to be in small letters. If you write, want to write the symbol, it has to be capital C. Okay, the CGS unit is electrostat unit, ESU or stat Coulomb or Franklin. Okay. The relation as such, you just need to know it. No compulsion in that. 1 coulomb is 3 into 10 to the power of 9 stat coulomb. Now comes, this is interesting. This I will discuss later with you people again. Then I will teach you capacitor. But right now also you need to know. What is dielectric constant? Before that you must be wondering, what is this dielectric? I have written dielectric constant, but what is this dielectric? So, uh, I hope you know about conductors, which allow current to pass through them. You know about insulators, which don't allow current to pass through them. There is a third category called as dielectric. Now, what is this dielectric? You know, air is a dielectric. In lightning, the charge is moving from the clouds to a particular place. Air is an insulator, but the charge is transferring. So what happens? It gets ionized in atmosphere and then it is passing. So it's a dielectric, okay, which transfers the charge without conducting. 
Now, dielectric constant. This is a very interesting and important topic which you need to understand. What do you mean by dielectric constant? So, I hope you remember we were discussing that the force between charges in vacuum. So, F naught is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R square. We name this as equation 1. Let me do this experiment in a medium. So, the force will be in the medium that will be Fm is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q1 Q2 by R square. Remember, I told you for vacuum it is epsilon naught. Here it is epsilon as I told you, absolute electrical permittivity of the medium. 1 and 2. Let's divide them. So, F0 by Fm, when I am dividing, what am I getting? It is, okay, great. I need to just let me check. Okay, let's be with this page only. Okay, so, F0 by Fm comes out as epsilon by epsilon naught. Or we can represent it by epsilon r or k, capital K. This k is called as dielectric constant. I must be wondering, what is this dielectric you have just derived, but what is it? What is this dielectric constant? So from this what we have derived, let us define it. So dielectric constant is the ratio of absolute electrical permittivity of a medium to absolute electrical permittivity of free space. Let's have another definition. The dielectric constant is the ratio of force of interaction between two charged particles in vacuum to the force of interaction between the same charges in a medium. I prefer this by the way. F0 by Fm is equals to K. But you must be wondering why are we doing this? What is the importance of all this? Let me explain this to you people. Do you know that the dielectric constant that is K for water is 81? 81. Still, what is the use for me? So let, uh, by the way, it's for water. Sorry, I have told you that it's for water. The dielectric constant of water is 81. Now, I have two charges which are in vacuum. I found out the force between them. Now, I want to find out the force between the same charges in water for which the dielectric is 81. Can you see the force between the charges will be 1 by 81 times of the force in vacuum. That means the force reduces. Less attractive force, water, hydrogen and oxygen, less attraction. So, what is happening? Water becomes a good solvent because the molecules are not tightly packed. I hope now you have understood. Now, principle of superposition, by the way, this is nothing. It's a very simple thing. Let us consider there are three people. One, two, three. Three people are there. Now, we all exert force on one another. Okay. Or let us suppose I am a particle and there are two more particles. One here, one here. Okay. Now, they are exerting force on me. What is the total force I am experiencing? It will be K or 1 by 4 pi epsilon, whatever you wish to write. I am Q1, this is Q2, this is Q3. So K, Q1, Q2 by this distance square, that is R12 square, plus K, Q1, Q3 upon R13 square. This is superposition, that is the force. Here what we have done, we have taken one test charge Q0. And Q0 is experiencing force from everyone. Everyone is bullying Q0 now. So, Q0 experiences force because of Q1. See the diagram here. So, what is the force? Sorry for this. So, this is the force F01. What is the force? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q0 Q1 by R10. We have said this as R10 as the distance square and the direction also with the unit vector. Now, second one, this is also applying force in this direction. This is also applying. So, what should I do? I added all of them. So, F0 is equal to 1 by, epsilon, 1 by 4 pi epsilon not Q0 not Q1 by R1 not square, R1 not unit cap and so on. Okay. Or you can use summation also. So, 1 by 4 pi epsilon not goes out. Summation of I equal to 1 to N Q0 QI upon R 
I naught square R I naught. Okay. Now this continuous distribution of charge, you need not to worry on that. There are only three things from this which you need to understand. Okay. If you wish to read, the notes are there with you. You can read it. Just read it. Then I will tell you the important part which you need to understand and which you need to do in this. Only three things you need to understand in this that I will explain to you people. So you can read it. In the meantime, let me tell you. The first one is called as linear charge density. What is this linear charge density? It is represented by lambda. Linear charge density is charge by length. So if I have a rod, I want to find out the charge distribution, I will find linear charge density, charge by length. The second one is called as surface charge density, represented by sigma. Sigma, it is charge by surface area. Linear charge density here. Uh, by the way, the unit of linear charge density, as I told you the formula, charge by length, charge is coulomb, length is meter, so coulomb per meter. Surface charge density, charge by area, charge is coulomb, area is meter square, so charge coulomb per meter square. Third one, it is volume charge density, represented by rho, okay, that is charge by volume, unit, coulomb per meter cube. So this was our first topic, okay, come to the next video to understand the topic of electric field, okay, thank you so much.